Fossil is the name given to the remains or traces of a long dead plant or animal preserved in the Earth's crust since very ancient times. Fossils collected from all over the world are our most important source of information about the living things that once existed on Earth. The skeletons of living things, whose contact with the air was suddenly cut off, have survived down to the present day. Research into fossils permits us to learn about animals and plants, revealing which living things lived during which periods. It also provides evidence of the fact that some creatures, which existed millions of years ago, have remained unchanged to date. According to Darwin's evolutionary theory, whose invalidity has been definitely proven by the fossil record, species are descended from one single common ancestor. According to the theory, single-celled organisms appeared first, and over the course of hundreds of millions of years, these first developed into invertebrate marine creatures, and later into fish. These fish then moved onto dry land, giving rise to reptiles. According to the same claim, birds and mammals then evolved separately from reptiles. If all this were true, then a very large number of intermediate forms of species must have once existed, as one life form supposedly evolved into another. For example, if reptiles really evolved into birds, then billions of half-reptile, half-bird forms must once have lived these intermediate forms would have had incomplete, non-functional wings. It was Darwin who originally named these hypothetical imaginary creatures intermediate forms. He knew that if his theory was to be verified, then the remains of these intermediate forms would have to be unearthed in the fossil record. In his book, The Origin of Species, Darwin wrote, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties, linking most closely all of the species of the same group together, must assuredly have existed. Consequently, evidence of their former existence could be found only amongst fossil remains. However, Darwin was also well aware that the fossil record contained absolutely none of his intermediate forms. That's why he devoted a special chapter in his book to the matter, where he posed these worrisome questions. Why, if species have descended from other species by insensibly fine gradations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? As by this theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the earth? Evolutionists seize on fossils as very important in terms of being able to establish relationships and point out developmental similarities between them and today's living life forms. They look to the fossil record to verify their claims that species evolved gradually from one another. Yet, although 80% of the fossil record has now been unearthed, they still have not a single piece of evidence to offer. For that reason, in an attempt to prove their theories, some evolutionists have attempted to manufacture their own fossils, and these have later been realized to be forgeries or distortions. The Earth's fossil layers actually prove that living things have existed in their perfect forms ever since they were first created. Neville George, a Glasgow University professor of paleontology, admitted this many years ago.
There is no need to apologize any longer for the poverty of the fossil record. In some ways, it has become almost unimaginably rich, and discovery is outpacing integration. The fossil record, nevertheless, continues to be composed mainly of gaps. Niles Eldridge, the famous Harvard University paleontologist, expresses the invalidity of Darwin's claim that the reason why no transitional forms have been found is the insufficient fossil record. The record jumps, and all the evidence shows that the record is real. The gaps we see reflect real events in life's history, not the artifact of a poor fossil record. Whenever the fossil record is mentioned, most people mistakenly assume that there is a positive relationship between the record and Darwin's theory. However, an article in New Scientist by David Raup, a professor of geology from Harvard, Rochester, and Chicago universities, refers specifically to this error. A large number of well-trained scientists outside of evolutionary biology and paleontology have unfortunately gotten the idea that the fossil record is far more Darwinian than it is. This probably comes from the oversimplification inevitable in secondary sources, low-level textbooks, semi-popular articles, and so on. Also, there is probably some wishful thinking involved. In the years after Darwin, his advocates hoped to find predictable progressions in general, these have not been found, yet the optimism has died hard, and some pure fantasy has crept into textbooks. The American paleontologist, Stephen Stanley, describes how this aspect of the fossil record is ignored by the Darwinist dogma that dominates the scientific world, and how that dogma persuades others to ignore the facts, too. The known fossil record is not, and has never been, in accord with gradualism. What is remarkable is that, through a variety of historical circumstances, even the history of opposition has been obscured. As the biological historian William Coleman has recently written, the majority of paleontologists felt their evidence simply contradicted Darwin's stress on minute, slow, and cumulative changes leading to species transformation. Their story has been suppressed. The oldest stratum in which fossils are found is the Cambrian, estimated at between 530 and 500 million years old. Apart from single-celled organisms, no fossils have been discovered in any strata older than the Cambrian. In the Cambrian period, a number of very different species appeared suddenly. More than 30 species, such as jellyfish, starfish, and snails, emerge all at once. Contrary to the assumptions of the theory of evolution, these creatures possessed very complex bodily structures rather than simple ones. Trilobites with their hard shells, segmented bodies, and complex organs are a good example. Their abundant fossils have made it possible for detailed research to be conducted on the trilobite's eyes. This structure is made up of hundreds of tiny combs, each one of which contains a double lens. The trilobite's eye is the earliest known eye on Earth and definitely refutes the Darwinist claim that living things evolved from the simple to the complex.